Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, fresh off the airplane from Los Angeles. Uh, I, I, are you, you're dragging because I kept you up. I didn't get in until like <laughs> almost 2 a.m. Tyler, I know you're still dragging. Uh huh. How are y'all doing? Okay. Awesome, man. Uh, Tyler and all t- Tyler and I went out to Vid Summit in Los Angeles what's this vid, week. What's Vid Summit? It's um, well, it's kind of a conference for YouTube creators, mm-hmm. um, editors, anybody in the I guess YouTube game. YouTube game. I mean, that, is that how you best describe it? Because it, I mean, it was more than you just YouTube. The primarily it was YouTube, but a lot of the guys still do like. TikTok and yeah. Facebook and all, all the other stuff. Kind of reminds me of like our Let's Get to Cooking community or something like that, where it's just like a whole bunch of like-minded folks that you can kind of yeah. stop and talk about, nerd out about the science of how things work and what you're uploading, how many times you upload a week, all that stuff. So I, That did get me thinking. We could do a How to Barbecue Right, uh, Let's Get to Cooking conference so easy. <laughs> because you just, ha- I mean, uh, all it is I've is you just get to pe- people conference. to speak, you go out, you're hanging out, there's breakout stuff where you just, people just, the whole thing was about networking and talking to people yes and everybody was on the same page so this wasn't like a it's not a fan experience it's not like Mm -hmm. one of the comic cons or VidCon or one of those where you go to see there's plenty of youtube stars there like people that like we're not even on the same level as some of these people yeah you said mr beast yeah mr beast is there he's like (laughs) part of the he was like one of the ones organizing this whole thing and he's we're talking these are youtube like phenoms (laughs) the biggest of the biggest and so I, mean, I couldn't even get close. I was I was wanting to meet him. I could. We didn't even get close to him. Nah, Mr. Beast. But there were like so many people just walking around that had like yeah, like seventeen million. Like it's it's a cool space where you can just go up to somebody with seventeen million subscribers and like talk about their success and like the things that they've learned and stuff, and then apply that to your own channels and stuff. And so it was an amazing experience. It was cool. It was cool. I've always I'm ready to go back. A, I've I've always wanted to do a conference because in a former life I kind of that's what you did. Well, yeah, kind of little, yeah, yeah, a little. We've um, done like the National Barbecue Association had a yeah. yearly conference going, but we didn't for a do while. the back we did, end. We no, we just of... would do the speaking engagement yeah. part or, go, or attend it. It's I like I like being on the attending side. I would just I do too. Let's get to cooking. Just a good reason for us to all get together in like Jamaica or something <laughs> <laughs> or the Bahamas. Oh, I guess I'm talking about that, but I really hadn't talked to you all week. Like we I know, left but... Monday, and I haven't. We text a few times, and that's it. This I've is been, the first. <laughs> me and Tyler have been on a mission. This is the first time I've seen you face to face all week. It's weird. So, what's been happening around here this week? Did you do any recipes? <laughs> <laughs> did you release any videos? <laughs> no. no. We did put out that uh, ribeye sandwich, right? Yeah, monster, yeah, that monster ribeye, ribeye sandwich. sandwich. Man, that was so good. That was a good recipe. Yeah. The what made it to me was the the uh, mushrooms and the onions and the provolone on top of it. God, it was so good. So you just took a ribeye that you bought from Kroger. Yeah, and actually, I didn't pick those out. You did. Yeah. I was like, shit, because I forget I was tied up that day, and you were going to go get some supplies to do those TikTok videos. And I said, I need not super thin ribeye steaks, but I wanted like that 8 to 10 ounce. Like if you go, and I've seen like ribeye steak sandwiches, like Huey's, one of my favorite local burger joints, has a steak sandwich on their menu and it's always like but there's a, it in no steak it's sliced right no no it's a steak oh it is yeah they have a steak does? yep yep they, now they do like a, their version of a philly cheese steak but yeah this is actually a steak and it's so you don't want like a 16 ounce inch and a quarter thick ribeye yeah. on a yeah, sandwich yeah. you got to go a little bit smaller so that's what and that's why i was saying we want them eight to ten ounces which is you know it's probably three quarters of an inch thick it wasn't like a super thin steak yeah it's enough to get a good Minute and a half, minute and a half, flip it, three more minutes, and it's perfect, medium, rare. And that's that's where I wanted it. And that's what I did. I kept it super simple. It was some uh, beef rub on it, and then I hit it with uh, AP. a little bit. Of, and that was it, salt, it was pepper, AP garlic. And beef. When yeah. you say beef rub, you mean swine Swine lodge prime beef, yeah. yeah. So just some, I didn't marinate, no binders, none of that stuff. You didn't tenderize either. Didn't tenderize it. I did tie it up, though. Yeah. Because a lot of times you cook a... a Smaller ribeye like that, the fat's going to separate. It's going to kind of, you know, spread out on you. I wanted to hold it into that burger shape because I was doing it on a burger bun, and I knew if I put a little butcher twine around it, it would stay. So I trimmed off the excess fat. It had a little tail on them, trimmed that off, made it look like a round steak. 
like a burger bun, tied it up, seasoned it with a little AP and a little of prime beef, went on the grill grates over some Royal Oak coals, and it was like three minutes each side. And I did the old twisty twist to it, and make the pretty grill marks. The whole time that was going, I kept one other side of the grill, threw my mushrooms and onions in there, sauteed them up. Um, in a cast iron. Yeah, in a cast iron, just with a little yeah. olive oil and a little AP on those for some seasoning. And then once they got sauteed up, the steaks were done, I put the steaks on a sheet pan. Or you could have put them back in a cast iron skillet, whatever. You don't want yeah. the, the purpose is not to cook the steak anymore because it's done, but you want to get it on something where you can sit it right back on the grill because you got to pile up the sauteed vegetables, the mushrooms, the onions. And then I use provolone cheese. You could use whatever kind of cheese you wanted over the top. I just put a couple slices of thin provolone over it. I think provolone goes really good with oh, steak. It does. I don't know what it is. It's just a great flavor yeah. for it. It's not really sharp or anything like a cheddar. You know, it's just kind of a mild cheese. It's kind of creamy. It's yeah. not not mozzarella, but it's you know it's got some cheese flavor. But it's good. And I put that on the over the top and just set that whole sheet pan right back on the grill. Thirty seconds. And it was thirty seconds to a minute. minute yeah. Whenever that cheese starts to melt, it's done. Toast up your bun a little bit, and then hit it with a creamy horseradish sauce. And y'all have probably seen that recipe that I've done. It's I mean. We you take, do it with um it's prepared horseradish prime. and um uh, creamy horseradish, like craft creamy horseradish, some blue plate mayo to you know, just to mellow out the horseradish, uh, a little bit of black pepper. I think you put a little bit of dash of Worcestershire too in there and just start hot it up. Sauce. A little hot sauce too. It's a super simple we call it like a creamy horseradish spread or mayo or whatever. Horseradish mayo. You serve it with prime rib. Oh yeah. That's where I've done it a lot of times with sandwich. It, it's it's good on the side. Like if you're eating a piece of prime rib. Just have you a dollop of that on your plate and <laughs> smear it, drag that prime rib slice through it as you eat it. But it, it's really it does good, good on a sandwich. Yeah, steak sandwich is. An you know that's that sandwich. sauce with with the. I mean, I don't know. It's got to be the blue plate that makes it right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good on pork too. Like we do it on the little sliders. Like when we do little pork tenderloins. Yeah. So you can season them up. I wouldn't use the prime beef, but I would I would use like you know AP and steak rub or something like that or a barbecue rub. And do a little pork tenderloin and slice it up. You can do the same thing. Even with the veg would be good with the cheese over it. Make some great little sliders. I may need to. I know I've done a lot of little pork sliders, but that would be a good one. Yeah. I wonder I'm, if I'm you could notes of that. do the steak as a slider form. I don't see why not. You could just slice it. Slice it up. Cook it and slice yeah, it. Or use a different. You could use a different cut of steak, too. Yeah. You could make a strip slider, like a New York strip sliders or something like that. Do a couple steaks. Oh, oh. <laughs> you taking notes? <laughs> yeah. I've got. You should see all the ideas. Like from sitting through this vid summit that we did, and just ideas popped in my head of the videos to do. Watching these other guys and seeing how they come up with names and stuff, I was like, oh, I could do that. Yeah. I could do that with a brisket, or I could do that with a steak or bacon. So I will say, going to those conferences, typically the thing that I get the most out of is just the ideas it helps generate inspiration inspiration mm -hmm. you get from it. it's not yeah. necessarily you're learning you're not you're not gonna like so you'll we, learn a little yeah but. we learn but we learn like I think you learn more what not to do <laughs> yeah. instead of what to do yeah yeah because I mean I realize like we don't we don't know nothing about YouTube. <laughs> we're in Mississippi. We're in a YouTube desert where we are. And I don't know how we made it to where we did on it. Because, it, I mean, if I had to say anything, it was consistency. We stay consistent. Yeah. Because did we do it the right? We did not how to YouTube right. That might be a whole other channel. <laughs> like when we flip this script, if we can scale this to a whole other level, maybe then I could you, what, <laughs> talk you, about how to do YouTube. but. I've always thought you were really good at how to explain and how to you cook your barbecue. You yeah, know, you yeah. like barbecue. You're good at cooking, and you do a good job at explaining it. And I'm kind of figured out how to edit. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that. Oh, we're so far behind the time on editing. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, really? <laughs> yeah. It's like we're editing for Dal and Dals. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these guys are like. I'm talking. I mean, what? How many? Like on Jimmy, one of his. Uh, just doing thumbnails. He had like 36 thumbnails for they do for a video. Yeah, but how did they just swap them? They yeah, see. so. Well, they, they well, test them. They AB, like AB, AB test, test everything. Them. Yeah. So for, the that. first thing is you pull up like six. So one of them, so you might have like categories one through five, 
and then you'll have like 1A, 1B, 1C, and yeah. it's like one like ever so slightly like the font colors changed or something's changed about it. Or lighting. And lighting. Or background. Yeah. Or- so the one that he just uploaded, it was, a, it was a difference between like the sky being blue and the sky being stormy in the background, and they picked the blue sky because it made the thumbnail pop a bit better. Um, he did say that that video is performing a 10 out of 10, so there's a good chance we'd see one of the other <laughs> thumbnails pop up. But that's another reason they do is if they see notice the video is not performing within the first 24 hours, then they'll switch it over to one of those other 20. Yeah. And like they will continue to cycle through them just because that video will continue to live forever, and it's a Mr. Beast video. So yeah, And they'll watch what the CTR does on it, too, by the thumbnail swap over the course of a few days. Okay, y'all so, are getting technical. <laughs> we're, we're, we're but, so, so I didn't know this. <laughs> I did not know that you could go back and just swap out thumbnails, and it yeah. might recirculate that video. Like it hit, it'll hit the algorithm again. Yeah. So, but I mean, the one uh, thing that like I'll give y'all, and you said you don't know how you guys made it this far, is the thing is, is you guys set the precedence. I feel like for a lot of channels back then, so there really wasn't, there was knowledge needed, but you guys kind of pioneered the way that that works, in my opinion. So like that's yeah. why it seems that the way. The formula. The formula yeah, of everything. Yeah. 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 So. I've, I have watched other people's barbecue videos or cooking videos and been like. Hey, that's kind of how we do it. (laughs) 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 Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, that's that was that was a big thing. A lot of these uh, guys that were talking at the conference were saying they they'll see somebody else's ideas hit and they'll just uh, change up some stuff and do it their way. Yeah, following the same thing because it's I mean it's kind of like a reference. You're like, oh man, that people like that. Why not do that? Well, it's, you can't. I mean, innovating innovating is hard. Yeah, that's the hardest thing to do is to innovate. Well, you do the same thing with recipes. You'll see yeah. somebody cook something or go over to a restaurant and try something. Or That's know. exactly how I get inspiration. I mean, I call it getting inspiration from a recipe, whether it's from a cookbook, I'm a cookbook junkie, or whether it's from out eating at restaurants or seeing somebody else's video or something come through. It's like, hey, they did that in the oven or they did, you know, they're, yeah. they're frying this dish. What if we took some of those elements and turn it into something barbecue or on the grill or or it could be something totally different, a side dish yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was a it, it was a cool experience because like I mean we had people walking up to Malcolm and stuff like that. I would say that like res- like hey man, much respect, blah blah blah. But it was like it was just like a mutual atmosphere where it wasn't like mm-hmm. like nobody. It wasn't really like nobody was stopping to take pictures and stuff. Not that that is a bad thing or anything like that. But like I said, just like you were in the company of your peers, you know. So yeah, it was cool. It, I was I was shocked by how many people that were like doing the conference. Like work in the conference or had a booth at the conference, they knew who we were. Like, I was yeah. like man, these people watch barbecue. Yeah. And they're and we're out in California. I was like, nope, you know, these guys aren't they're not into this. This is not tofu. <laughs> this is not yeah, out this is tofu, right. that's right. <laughs> 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 out of tofu, right. <laughs> hey, I had some tofu while I was there. Really? What'd you yeah, think? It was in Pad Thai. It was dang good. Me too. Yeah. I had uh ramen noodles one with night. The, with the with no utensil to eat. <laughs> Mine was <laughs> shrimp was and tofu, and I didn't. I just, you know, it's Uber Eats, and I'm trying to get something delivered to a hotel. Yeah. I have no idea where I'm at, and there, we were at the airport area, so there's not a lot of choices around there. And I saw this Thai restaurant, you know, advertised or whatever. So I ordered some of that, and it was delicious. I love pad thai. Yeah. So it was shrimp and tofu, and it was like big chunks of. Fried tofu. Oh, really? So it was kind of creamy, but they gave me like you know how Thai will give you the uh, the little red chili sauces to go with stuff. So it yeah, had like the yeah. dry spices yeah. and it had the red chili paste, and I just dumped it all like man <laughs> that that tofu and the shrimp in that sauce it was excellent. I've never had fried tofu tofu in it. I hadn't either because I thought it was like a big crouton or something. But it was like <laughs> so it kind of gets a know? texture. I mean, because I could tell like once I bit into it, it has a texture of like it's kind of. A little crunchy on the outside, but on the inside, it's kind of creamy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't bad at all. It was, it was. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of flavor. Yeah. It just takes the flavor of the sauce or whatever dish you're serving it with, I guess. Now, I'm not saying I would go to adding it to my barbecue, but hey, yeah. I don't know. It might be something. <laughs> tofu dog. <laughs> tofu dog. <laughs> I think I'd rather have tofu than the impossible meat. Yeah, I would know. <laughs> You you also kind of want to do your own uh, take on a Mr. Beast burger now, right? Yeah, we had so one day they like I don't know how they did it, but they had to do it in shifts because they got everybody a Mr. Beast burger. And if you never had you never had a Mr. Beast burger, uh-uh. so he st- it was a, he started his so, own thing. It's like a saddle. It's not really saddle. What do they call it? Ghost kitchens. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's where other kitchens will open up and cook his recipe. Yep. I think so. Like it's almost like a f- ghost franchise. 
Yeah. Because you have to cook it to their specs, and you probably ordered their packaging, and it's like, so it doesn't look like it's coming from, say, Windy City Grill here in Hernando. Yeah, yeah. But they're actually doing Mr. Beast, and when you go, that's who's cooking it and prepping it, and somebody's picking it up and bringing it to you. Mm-hmm. And it's only available delivery most places. I think so. Correct? Yeah. He did yeah. just, no, they did just open a, uh, the first physical location, yeah. like in Jersey. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. But. That see that whole model of the ghost kitchens is kind of interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. It's a way to do a franchise no without startup. Much, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not investing. In, if you probably already got the equipment or something, so so if you had a kitchen, you could go several restaurants. Yeah, and you're just one. You know, you're the operations basically, yeah. and you're taking advantage of the brands. But it was good. I was I was hesitant. I was like, okay, I don't know how many thousand people were at this conference. But so you had to sign up, and they were only doing like blocks of like what two fifty at a time. Yeah, and they would do it every hour. So so only a little app agenda. You had to sign up where you wanted your lunch in between sessions or something. So me and Tyler got the same one, and we I don't know, we were late to it because mm-hmm. we had to get like the third or fourth time. We didn't get lunch till like one thirty one day when they did it. So you went and you in part of the lobby where this conference was. They formed a big long line, and I stood in line for a burger. If you could believe it, <laughs> stood in line How for long? a hamburger. It was like I mean, you know me; I don't do lines. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I mean, it was thirty minutes. It was yeah. every bit of thirty minutes. And I was like, dude, I don't, I don't go to Disney World. I don't stand in line. <laughs> I don't, I don't stand in line. Yeah. And Tyler's like, I'll stand in line for you. I said, No, I'm not gonna be that guy. <laughs> so I'm gonna try the Mr. Beast burger. So I'm gonna stand in line. So we did, and they give it to you, and it's like in this McDonald's Big Mac style box. Yeah, I saw the picture, and it's all, yeah, it's all logoed up, Mr. Beast, and I'm not going to lie. It was a dang good burger. I don't know which ghost kitchen cooked that one or how they did it. but uh, Was it a beef burger? Yeah, yeah. Beef it burger. Was, it was. Double. So it was single? more like a smash burger. Okay. Double stack, extra cheese, big, thick pickle slices on it, uh, mustard and ketchup. That was about it. I think there was mayonnaise on it. Was there too. mayo too? Yeah, I think it was all okay. three. Uh, the ketchup and then, yeah. Okay. But, it's, but no, like, lettuce, no tomato, mm-hmm. I don't think. It was just, I mean. Pickle Meat was cheese. the only veg. And the bun was pretty, like, meaty, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was a thick, like, kind of like a brioche-style bun. Mm-hmm. Held up. I mean, it was fresh. I was thinking, okay, we're fixing to get some food poison. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Because <laughs> they got these burgers, and they're trying to get them out to all these oh, people. Yeah. But they must have been using different ghost kitchens to do that and had them delivering different times because there's no way one, part, one, one little restaurant could have fed that conference like that. But they did run out. Like, not everybody got them. Some yeah. people had to settle for Subway towards the end. <laughs> but they were still doing lunch at, like, 4.30. It was, like, one of the later windows. Oh, and, wow, really? Yeah. yeah. But they ran out. So was Mr. it Beast fries burger. and burgers or just no, the burger? No, it was just a burger. Chips. You could get all the liquid yeah. death you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then a table full of chips. Yeah, that was the first time I tried liquid death. It was okay. It's like kind of tastes like yeah. it's one of those drinks that has like the flour aftertaste or whatever. That yeah, it had I like it was a, just water. Well, I think they originally started out just canned water. Yeah, with cool branding, but now they're doing flavors. Oh, okay. so they had like berry flavor and like mm-hmm. had like hibiscus liquid death. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's great branding, you know. <laughs> but it got Michael. I remember the yeah. first time. Oh we yeah, saw that's it. what Tyler said. It. You had this. I said no, but Michael had to have it. <laughs> Drinking liquid death. I mean, <laughs> And then we ate another cheeseburger the next day. Yeah, we had, like, I had <laughs> mainly West Coast cheeseburgers. Were they good? First night, so we got there, and our flight didn't get in until, like, we didn't get to the hotel till like, 10, 30, 11. Mm-hmm. So the, but we made it to the hotel bar, and they were like, we're doing last call in 15 minutes. So I was like, all right, let me get a vodka soda, let me get another vodka soda, let me get two Modellos. <laughs> and I said, Tyler, what do you want? <laughs> So, I wish this was a good story. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's true. <laughs> so we pounded those. I said, the kitchen closed. Oh, yeah, kitchen closed 30 minutes ago. I was like, dang, what are we going to do? We can Uber eat something? I was like, well, let's see if there's a close place by we can go to. No, we're in LAX area. So something popped up and it had decent reviews on mm-hmm. Yelp, but it was called the Melody Bar. And I was like, eh, you know, it's a decent bar food. So we get there and it is. Is crunk. <laughs> like, they put us out in this alley. Wait, wait this is and, a Monday night. Too, yes, Monday right? night. Monday night. <laughs> Monday night. I don't know. It was probably about 11, 30, 12 o'clock when we get there to the to the Melody Bar. The, 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 the Uber driver drops us off in this alley and says, are you sure this is right? Like, yeah. <laughs> so we jump out, and, like, there's two dudes standing out by this big privacy fence, and you could tell it goes back. 
We get in, and first they throw us up against the wall. It's like, all right, we got a fish guy to get in here. And so it was like, turn around. Oh, my gosh. Down. I forgot I like, about that. Yeah. I said, Tyler, he's. <laughs> I was like, ooh. I'm four modellas of two Vikings in, plus been on the plane. <laughs> so I'm, you know, no pain. <laughs> so we get frisky, and we go in, and it's all these, like, outdoor patio tables, and there's people just laid out. And it's like, you know California. Anything goes. <laughs> yeah. like, it's just a cloud. So as you get out the airport, it's ganja deep. I mean, for real. Like, I mean, right there at the airport. As soon as you get off the airport, it's like they don't you even care. It. Yeah. Well, this place is like it's whatever goes. And we go up in there. We go through all these picnic tables, and people just laid out. We get in. They got this lady DJ, and she is. I mean, she's playing all the hits, like the workout mix. I mean, she's got Rick Ross. She's got the old stuff. I mean, it's it's all. I mean, it's it's, it's we're talking hip hop. Yeah, it's yeah. going that hardcore. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Like the hardcore stuff, for real. <laughs> and so we're sitting in there, and I notice it's eclectic mix. You know, there's some biker looking dudes in there that might kill you. There's some, there's some gangsters that might kill there's you. Some, yeah, 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 some strippers are going to work or just getting off. It might kill you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and there's some Mexican people running the place. So I was like, you know, okay, I'm cool. I'm down with yeah, anybody. Yeah. So I sit down, and it's like, is the food good here? What are you eating? And Were dude, you nervous at all, Tyler? I was feeling good by now. <laughs> he was Saying, going with I was with the Tyler flow. Tyler was with point. me. So he was with me, and you know me. I oh. was rapping. I had the, the bartender lady go, and I was buying drinks for folks. Malcolm has never felt uncomfortable anywhere. <laughs> yeah, no, we were good. <laughs> I mean, he will make me feel uncomfortable. He's like, yeah. come on. I'm like, oh, no. The bartender lady was like, oh, you rap? I was like, yeah, I rap. <laughs> I'm here, I know. <laughs> and Mikey told me when he started singing to turn around, and I did not listen. <laughs> we did not listen. <laughs> I was good. We did. So we had a burger there. It was like, I don't know what we ordered. We asked the dude what to order. And he's like, oh, we got chicken sliders. We got, you know, burgers. I think Tyler got like a something mac and cheese. Jalapeno mac and cheese. Um, they showed up with some sliders and set them out like chicken. There was like fried chicken. Tenders. They weren't that great but then they brought out a burger that was really good so we kind of split stuff up had that had a few shots of tequila and <laughs> oh, had some modellos and i don't know what else we had bartender it was her birthday like the day before so <laughs> so we had some shots with her shots. yeah yeah <laughs> this is all news to me <laughs> there was like a dude booking he was like a bookie here running stuff he had his computer on the pool table and he was People were coming in paying them their bets and stuff i guess collected money paying money it was it was a it was, you know, my kind of scum. <laughs> <laughs> I was riding home. <laughs> so then, what you tell me is like, you saw a Live 360. I got back to the hotel like 3.30 or so. It was late. It was late. <laughs> that was first night. It was day one. Like, we hadn't been in L.A., I don't know, four hours. Uh, uh, then it was all, you know, did the conference did the next day. Did you do any more partying after that? What? We ended up in some hospitality suite on like the 12th floor of the hotel <laughs> one night. I knew I was done after that. That was like my uh, my grand finale at the yeah, first. I, don't on think, the I think Tyler just kind of chilled out Limped the rest on of the time. Yeah. I was just, Tyler got a little sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, almost a year to the day from I'm, the last time. If you keep track of the podcast, you can't. <laughs> you can't keep up with Malcolm. Uh, Heck yeah, I tried, but it was a it was great. It was a fun time. I'll never forget it. That's for sure. I got to go back to LA. I didn't like move from like a I don't know. A Two mile radius of the of the airport. <laughs> I didn't really see California. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I like what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey did tell me that he uh, pulled Tyler aside when y'all were walking out the door. He said, "Look, if he starts telling you he loves you, or he starts rapping, get him back to the hotel room." <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I was scared. I looked at him like. How, like, what? How am I going to do that? I did have a fight with my wristband one night. Like, so uh, you know how this goes, Shell. We've done like we go to Braves games. They put up. They put these. It's like a claw barbecue f- event. It's like everything. claw rip. You cannot rip this stuff. It is. I don't know what it's made out yeah. of. Oh, you still got your zone. Like you can't yeah. get it off. That's it. And yeah. The, so I had one. And on. It only goes tighter. It only gets tighter. <laughs> and no the more. Way. And for some reason, I mess with it. And I get it on there. Then I and I can still feel like it's on my wrist to this day. You start it's messing like ghost with it, feeling. And then you start panicking. And then and that's what I did. I'd had been up to the hospitality suite with these other guys, and I was like, got back to my room. I don't know what time it was. It's like, 
I'm about to cut my hand off. <laughs> I can't feel it. My, my hand's going numb. It's like I'm losing blood flow. Doesn't it look different color? Now you got nobody there with me. Tyler's on a different floor in his room. I don't want to call somebody. The only thing, and I'm so, so first I'm going, well, maybe I can chew it off. <laughs> and so I go to working on it. I go to working on it, right? And I get it, and it's just, there's shreds and stuff all over me in my hotel room. And I, can't, and I was like, maybe I got some fingernail clippers. Nope, I flew. I didn't have anything sharp. From my pad tie, they gave me like one of these little utensil packs. Yeah, like and I'm plastic? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was like, so I, so I go get it out. I've got it in my trash over here, so I get it out of there, open it up, and I got this little plastic butter knife, and it's got like four little teeth on it. <laughs> and so I sat there for 30 minutes. And here, I mean, it's probably 2 o'clock in the morning now. I'm watching hurricane stuff on yeah. Weather Channel. <laughs> I've, got, this is I've got me a big giant water that I bought down at the gift shop, and I've got my butter knife, and I'm sitting on the side of my bed <laughs> trying to claw this thing, just knowing that my hand's going to get cut, circulation's going to cut it off, and I'm going to have... That's my good. It's my right hand. I, mean, I can't lose that one. It's so finally. This is why you can't travel by yourself? You've got to have somebody there. So finally, I mean, I never do get it cut like all the way off. I guess I finally just decided to go to sleep. It's like I'm, I got it loosened enough to where I could get two fingers under it. Yeah. And I knew this from putting my dog collar on. If you can get two fingers on it, you're all right. <laughs> you know, it's the perfect thing. So I was like, all right, I'm you good. I got. I talked myself down. I, I got out of the panic situation. And so I laid my little butter knife on the side of the bed and I went to sleep. Got up the next morning. I was like, oh, man, it looks like I've got some kind of Indian fringe on me. <laughs> yeah. Stuff's hanging down everywhere. It's, it's like it grew. It didn't. It, it like does not want to come apart. It's just. What did you do? I went to the front desk and said, I was kind of like went down there. And I didn't want nobody to see me with yeah, all this yeah. shredded thing on my arm. And I thought about it. I was like, well, maybe people think it's cool. I just kind of. You know, started my style. Trend. It's my yeah. new trend. Yeah. <laughs> and then so, but I eased down to the front desk. And I said, y'all have any scissors? And she looked at the other lady and was like, yeah, maybe. And I was like, I got this thing. And she said, oh, you want to get that off? I was like, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so they saved me. They let me borrow some scissors. Did you have any problems getting in and out of the, the No, nobody there? checked the credential one. Yeah. So I don't even know why. I really don't even know why they put those things. I think it was to see who would panic. <laughs> <laughs> I should have, like, made a video of that in the hotel rooms. It probably <laughs> would have been interesting. <laughs> yeah, at 2 a.m., but. No, it was it was a lot of fun. So you had better luck at the front desk than I did because I ordered ramen noodles one night and they decided not to give me any kind of utensils, no chopsticks, no forks, no nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so it's like 12:30 at night. I go downstairs to the main like conference area or whatever, and I go to the front desk and I'm like, I probably waited for 10 to 15 minutes, but at this point my food was getting cold and like nobody was there. There was no forks. I kind of walked around, nothing. So at this point, I had a decision to make either whether I just wasn't going to eat tonight or I was just going to have to go up back up to my hotel room and eat it with my hands. <laughs> and I that's what happened. Spoon. Well, ramen, I had, I had, can, I, you can kind of... could have yeah. borrowed my plastic fork. And it was from <laughs> a knife, I mean. I <laughs> should have hit you up, I guess. <laughs> thought what about using my toothbrush like the other end or did something. Did you just go full animal style? Oh, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was no shame. It was by myself. It's ramen. You could drink it at <laughs> least. Yeah. It. I was drinking the broth. It kind of was set up to do that, but then the noodles itself. Self. So iffy. It was, uh, but the ramen was really, really good. Yeah. Like all the food I really had in that area was good, especially like the last day we had In and Out. Yeah. So that was that was the next burger. Yeah. That's the third burger. So trifecta. how did you, how did you order your so burger? First, we it was like a, it wasn't too far from the hotel, but we just got a lift. And so what is his name? Disneyland Edward. Disneyland Edward. <laughs> we made fun. We made friends with the lift driver. I mean, you know how California traffic is. It's yeah. Even though it's like a mile and a half or whatever, it still takes a minute to get there. So we're talking to the lift dude, and he's you know telling us about his area or you know California. That's where we've been anywhere out there, or whatever. And we get to In and Out, and he's like, oh, I love In and Out. He's like, I might take me a lunch break. So I said, All right, man. Hey, we'll buy you lunch. Come on, go with us. You want to go? <laughs> so we're gonna need a ride back anyway. You know, turn your meter back on. We'll get a ride back. So he's like, well, let me go park. So me and Tyler go in. In and out is jam packed. I mean, it's jam packed. But we didn't. When we find a seat, by the time we ordered our food and got it, it was no problem. Uh, what you you just got a regular bar? We get we did. I did mm -hmm. a I did a double double animal style animal style fries. Heck yeah! I mean, it was you went all out. Yeah, it's, it's delicious. I had you to go to In and Out. You got to get it. You got to get yep. the, yeah. You know, See, I didn't know you could order the burger animal style. I ordered animal style fries, but then you were like, "Do you order your burger animal style?" I was like, "No, how did I not know this? Like, how did you know this before?" <laughs> yeah. I it's crazy. Yeah. But, what, so, do you like In and Out? I've only tried it twice, I think. Out in Texas. Yeah, yeah, in Texas. Yeah. Eh. 
It's. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're good. I would. I would say this one was. It's on par. My, my burger was fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's because that's the only thing I'd had that day, <laughs> but it was really good. I mean, it's like so. What makes it animal style is this sauce they put on it, and it's almost like a. It's like a Thousand Island Big Mac yeah, sauce, like fry Big sauce Mac kind sauce. of thing. Yeah. yeah. So they put, of course, a pile of cheese on it. So the fries gets the cheese covered in animal sauce, and then the burger is the same way. Their burger is super. The burger is super simple. Yeah. It's just like, like it's like diner style smash burger, and ex, you know it's got, of course, it's doubled up cheese. They had lettuce, tomato, onion on it, pickles, and then animal sauce and ketchup and stuff. So. Yeah, the animal style, like I mean, Thousand Island's usually kind of chunky, but I've noticed like theirs is super chunky. It's very like, chunky. Yeah. I think that's kind of the difference or whatever. Yeah, a lot it's of... got the pickle relish in it's mm-hmm. more prominent. Yeah, and it's kind of messy. It's like, very messy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like just the regular burger. Yeah, but Disneyland Edward Korean dude sat down <laughs> with us, and we talked to you too. Tyler walked to a little Seven Eleven. There was literally. Service planes flying 10 feet over your head it was <laughs> crazy and there's people just walk around like it's no big deal all of a sudden i'm walking to the 7-eleven across the street he's a, he's i mean airplanes covered. look crazy big and they're right <laughs> above your head like right over there and i was like oh and like everybody's just walking and i'm like wow okay it's crazy. y'all were really in inglewood weren't you um right Isn't on the edge right on the edge yeah which inglewood's where the rams play was it delphi sofi right there. sofi sofi, yeah. sofi stadium I didn't know I was that close to that. I'd see if I could stick around for a ball. <laughs> Go to a game, yeah. I'm all about going back. I mean, it was straight shot from Memphis. It was like I mean, going. It was like a four-hour flight. Coming back, it was like three and a half hours. Yeah. Wasn't bad at all. Now, the airport. <laughs> LAX or yeah. Memphis? No, LA, oh, Memphis is I Memphis breathe. is beautiful <laughs> compared to LAX. <laughs> they took us. Uh, I don't know where. I thought, I don't know where we were. Like, when we were coming back, I never had this happen to me at an airport before at all. First, we ride this shuttle, and it takes, I don't know, 20, 20 minutes, right? sometimes 30, depending on how much traffic. And we're not far from the shuttle from the airport to the airport. The hotel, okay. yeah. yeah. I mean, hotel it's like the right airport. there, right off property yeah. at LAX. Yeah. So it's not far, but traffic's horrendous out there. So we get on this shuttle, and it's it's kind of like a third world shuttle. I mean, they pile <laughs> people on there. Sardines, man. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there was chickens and goats on it at one point. <laughs> I mean, you're sitting like me out Spacey, you know, I need my space. <laughs> I've got this little tiny Asian girl practically sat in my lap. You know, <laughs> I mean, we're just, it's like we're crammed in here, crammed in here. And so they don't, and the drivers, I don't even know if they speak English, but he was like, he wouldn't tell you where you were, where we were stopping. And I've tried to get my phone out and watch the map because the terminals, there's like eight terminals. And what they're doing, I don't know if it's construction or what, but they've tried to make it the most confusing they can. Like Delta was it. Terminal one and two, and then it was supposed to have been three on my app, but it was really in B terminal, which I don't even know. That's like the International Hawaii terminal or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, a dude's telling us, and it's like, no, it says we need to go here. So, we don't get off the bus. We're on this shuttle, and first off, it they have piled 47 bags on there. Our bags are on bottom before we <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got to wade through these people to get off. And we finally, I was like, Tyler, I think we were supposed to get off at that third stop, and we passed it. I was like, we can't, we don't have enough time to make another loop around, and we still wouldn't know where to get off anyway, so let's get off at the next one. So we got off at, like, Terminal 4, mm-hmm. finally got our bags and jumped off, and the dude was like, no, 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 there, there, and I didn't know where he's pointing at going. So we jump off, and all of a sudden, the cloud hits you again. <laughs> I was like, I guess everybody tries to smoke everything they can before they get on the plane <laughs> yeah. oh, or whatever. Yeah. But we start asking people, like, where is this? Where is this? And they say, oh, you got to walk all the way back around. Walk. So we start walking with our bags on the outside of these terminals. And we find, and I, I find all these, like, I don't know if the foreign pilots and stewards were unloading at this one. <laughs> and so I'm out there. I say, oh, they're official looking. They got their uniforms on. They won't speak to me at all. Walking right by. Yeah, it's like walking by. Like, I'm not even there. Like, I'm a ghost. And they're bumping me and turning me. And I'm like, so I'm looking like ultimate tourist. <laughs> Panicking because I don't know where I'm in. We got like 20 minutes to get to our flight. And so we finally found the Have dude. Have you gone through security at this point? No, no. heck no. no. We didn't no. get close to security. <laughs> and that's its own story. Yeah, that's its own story. <laughs> like, so I'm trying to wrap this up. But so finally we find this dude that gathers the little luggage carts. And he's like, yeah, just go in there and go to the left. You're in the right place. So we walk in, and it's like Bangkok. You know, all these, you know. Thailand, Japan, Thailand, Tokyo. Yeah, like, Indonesia. Yeah, and that's where we are. Yeah. And I was like, we're looking for Memphis. And there's not a board. 
There, it's all like foreign language. This, I said, this cannot be the right terminal. We've passed four, <laughs> three on this side, three down this other side, and we're in this place that's going somewhere else in the world. These people have told us wrong. <laughs> so we start walking, and I find another old dude. And I was like, does, does this – look at my boarding pass. Is this where I go? Yeah, security is this way. Go down there and go to the right. So we go down there, and we get to the security – so she looks at mine. She's like, no, you're TSA pre-check. You got to go to the other side of the building. <laughs> and so it's like Tyler. And so Tyler goes one way and I'm going 400 yards this other way. And so I go down there and I ask the lady there before, cause you, I still ain't been through security, like all these international gates and all this stuff. And so she's like, go up this escalator and security up there. So I get up there, finally see TSA pre-check. I said, like, Oh, well I'm going through something. Get up there, go through that. I see Tyler. He's going to walk right back to me. And I'm like, what the heck? And so they give me like this poster card that says TSA pre-check. It's not even like, you know, my app or anything anymore. It's like somebody homemade it. So I go through security and I was like, Tyler, we cannot be in the right place. We get to go into all these gates, Bangkok, Indonesia, Guatemala. Saudi Arabia, Guatemala, Korean air. And I was like, there's nothing. We're going to Memphis, Egypt. If we're going close to anywhere, there's nothing to get here. So we go through all these gates and it's like a mile. And we find this one hallway, and it says gates 130 to 149 or whatever. And that's like, we're 139. So we go down there, and we keep going. And the airport chain, we got to go downstairs, and all of a sudden, we're at a Greyhound bus terminal, it looks like. <laughs> There's not even a, a vending machine. It is just old bus seats. And it's like 1970 airport. I mean, you could probably still smoke down there. We, <laughs> we got all the way down, and it's like, okay, here we go, Bogota. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was the other one? It was, it was Guatemala, it was, yeah, Guadalajara. Guatemala and Air, uh, Air Mexico. And I was like, shit, Tyler, what are we doing? I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> when we get down there, to one last gate, 139, it says Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> of all these places, no joke. I've had to fly out of the international before. And I was like, why? Like, that you talk about. You fly into Birmingham, you get the last gate. We got the last <laughs> gate. <laughs> it was crazy. And lucky for him in security, like he was pre-checked, so he didn't have to deal with this. But for us, they had like guard dogs, and they were <laughs> so there was a huge stretch of land between like uh like where you come up on the escalator and the actual security gate, where you have to like like they send two people at a time, and you have to like just beeline like walk straight through. And there's like two guard dogs, and so like they're like walking around. One's like sniffing my butt. <laughs> like it was like the window fly dirty. Like you would have been. <laughs> <laughs> See in there. Oh, God. And yeah, then I, I, I stopped for a second because he like came up to me and she was like, "Keep walking, keep walking." And I was like, "Oh my God!" It was we crazy. went. Like, we were. We just knew we were not going to make this flight. Luckily, it was delayed when we got there a little bit. But we were not going to. I mean, we were. I, I thought we were going to Egypt. I was like, <laughs> it must be Memphis, Egypt. They have got our things confused. They're sending us to Memphis, but it's not Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> But then I did see, like, the gate right beside us was going to Guadalajara. And I was like, oh, we got one of those in Hernando. <laughs> you know, maybe that's where it's taking us. We'll go to Guadalajara. At least I know what to order if I get there. <laughs> I need the Baja uh, fish tacos. Those cool. are a good time. Yeah. So we, but we made it, baby. We made it back. Barely. The West Coast trip was a success. <laughs> Someone asked, uh, what's the farthest you've ever traveled for an SEA event? I would say... Uh, Bahamas. Bahamas, yeah. yeah. The Abaco Islands. So I've heard Green rumors Turkey. that they're doing that uh, contest again. I will be signing up. Will you? I was going to ask. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to cook, but I'm going. Well, I'd heard rumors before at Memphis and May there was some rumblings. And then the SEA, official SEA, made a post yeah. uh, this week or last week about like, maybe, I don't know, if if people would want to do it again. Yeah. If not, but we can do the Let's Get the Cooking Conference somewhere. Yeah, in Bahamas. <laughs> somewhere tropical. <laughs> I like that idea. Yeah, that's a much better one. You don't have to cook anything. You just go and talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brainstorm idea. You got to go in like February. You got to go when it's like, you know, getting ready for grilling season where you're primed with ideas and re recharged like after that. winter or right in the middle of winter. I like this idea. Yeah, when contests aren't going on yeah. as much. Um, So... Some people were talking about rib membranes in the community. Yeah. Wanting to know what people's opinions of them were. Should you remove them? Should you not remove them? Some people like them. Some people don't. Um, I'm always pro removing the membrane. Um, I don't I don't like to eat it, for one. It's kind of chewy. And it, I think it, you get a better seasoning on the meat if you take it off. Um, I know some people score them. To get away with it, they're just—I think they're just being lazy, not wanting to take it off. I don't it's not know. Not that hard. 
I don't know why you wouldn't pull it off. It's just Sinu. Um, I don't know if you can. I don't know if it'll break down in your what is guts Sinu? or not. It's like, connective, <laughs> yeah. it's like connective tissue that holds muscles together. So it's like this thin layer well, we of t- time, yeah, it's a thin but... layer of connective tissue that usually holds larger groups of muscles together in in animals. I'm um, sure we our bodies probably have full of it, but I mean I know you know all animals have it. I don't know the the exact medical definition of what it is, but I would say it's connective tissue, tough connective tissue, tough connective tissue, yeah. Yeah. rubbery tough connective tissue. So definitely remove it. I think so. Well, someone was asking, should they take the time to remove it yeah. for cooking a bunch of them? Uh, I do, I do. When we cook, it doesn't take but a second to rip it off. Yeah. I mean, you grab you some pepper towels and just kind of ease it up and pull it off. If a little bit of it stays on, you're okay, but you want to get the bulk of it off there. There's nothing worse than going to a restaurant where they've got the, you know, you tear into it and you can't tear the ribs because it's got all this membrane on the back. I know old school ways and old school restaurants, you get it and it kind of gets a little crunchy and tough. And You say you like it. I, it's crunchy and I'm flavorful, a little bite. It's not flavorful <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's not flavorful. So um, I saw this question. I thought it was really, really good. So I'm starting to wonder if injecting a pork butt is necessary. If all you're doing is pulling it and chopping it, wouldn't it be easier to put those flavors for a glaze sauce dip instead when you serve? Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The only time I think you really need to use an injection, or the only time we really use one, is in comps when we're trying to overload flavor. You're not gaining, a, you're really not gaining a whole lot in moisture from it. It's not going to make the meat that much more moist when you get through cooking it. Um, it will impart flavor deep down in the meat if you don't have time to brine it. But a, a piece of meat like a pork butt has so much intermuscular fat, it's going to keep itself moist. When that fat breaks down, you cook it properly, it's going to break down. And if you're just pulling it or chopping it, mix that flavor back in with it before you serve it. It's so much that you're not gaining anything from it at all. Now, you know, some of the injections and stuff we use have like a moisture – binder in them it kind of makes them stay a little more moist but i think i, mean, I have cooked just You're as good phosphates. yeah phosphates they, yeah. i mean there's different stuff in them do you really want to eat that stuff no i don't think so i think it's harder on your system and your stomachs and stuff than it is worth what you're gaining doing it but I mean, we use it we use it in contests because we're trying to get that maximum flavor in it and we still Doctor, every don't think that just because we injected something, we're turning it right into a judge. We're doctoring it even more after we do all that to it. So you can overdo it with that stuff. I don't think. I mean, I think you know. Sometimes, like injections, the the main place I like to use injections is like turkey at Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or chicken. I mean, I, I like injecting whole chicken, whole turkey, just because they're so bland. But I'm not doing it to the necessary create but you moisture. Don't pull I'm doing that it for maybe. flavor down in it, and I don't serve it pulled up. Yeah. If I was pulling chicken, like when we do chicken sliders or chicken tacos, heck no, I'm just seasoning the outside, getting it done, and then doctoring it when it gets done. But you can't, like, say if you're slicing up a turkey breast, you really can't do anything to it other than that. And it's so plain and neutral, it just goes. It goes with it. I think when people tell you, um, oh, gosh, that is the best pulled pork I've ever yeah. had, it's because <laughs> we pull the pork. And then we doctor it. And then we doctor it. That's what we call it. And usually that means – Adding some AP to it, which is salt, pepper, garlic. Um, hitting it with a little vinegar sauce or barbecue sauce or either and pork au jus rub. that comes out of the wrap. A little more rub. Tossing it. And I'm not talking about coating it either. You, you want, want it it's where they don't really know it's done it's and you think it's way. in the meat. There's, I mean, Mike Mills, I learned that going to one of his uh, classes years and years ago. Everything that comes to his restaurant, they were, they were pretty much just cooking rub on it, get it cooked, finish it before it goes to the table. That's where you get all your flavor. Hit it with the flavor before you get it. Send it out. That way you're controlling cost. You're not spending too much on all these other crazy ingredients. You're just getting something on the meat to get a bark, and then you can doctor it and have it in a shake or on your sauce before you hits the plate, and it's good to go. And I'm I'm all I think it, I think I think it's better that way. I do too. I think it's better that way. Now, if somebody if you were going to sit down with somebody, now so so this goes back to Memphis and Mayor NBN style judging. We sat down with whole cuts of meat in front of a judge. You can't doctor it in front of them. You're pulling out muscles and giving it to them right there. If you're doing that. <laughs> I've seen people. It, don't I'm getting no secret. <laughs> but if you're doing that and you're wanting to give some, you've got, to, you've got to get that in there in that injection. Or, I mean, there's a lot of times we'll do a pre-injection and a post-injection before we bring it out. 
we hit it up again. The way we know that liquid and that flavor and all that's in there, so we give somebody meat. But if you're serving it all in a sandwich or just pulled pork or you know chopped meat or something like that, you can do it all. You can doctor it all at the end. I Save yourself that. some money too. I can't get the better product at the end. Better product, yeah. That's a good question. That's a real good question. I think though. so too. I thought that was a really good question. Um, it's chili season. Heck yeah! I made a, we made a pot before. Um, I left to go to California. That's what we ate last Sunday, watching uh, pro games. Um, and we did something a little different this time. White bean chili. Yeah, we didn't use. What do you typically use? Kidney beans. Um, usually I or use like. Beans? So you don't like beans in your chili a whole lot, eh, or if you do, you I like it on a minimum scale. So I'll I'll buy a can of like Bush's chili hot beans. And it's different. It's, I think they're larger, like red kidney beans or something like that, usually in some kind of a sauce for chili. Um, but I usually only add like a can to a whole pot. Um, I've been trying to eat some more protein and eat a little bit better. So I was like, well, I want to make. <laughs> That's hence the in and out. <laughs> <Light of plastic. laughs> Don't. Uh, burgers. I have lapses. <laughs> <laughs> if nobody's, not, perfect. nobody's perfect. Nobody's <laughs> perfect. But I did make some good chili before. We went out of town, and it was a black bean chili. I, I got to reading, and it was like, man, black beans have so much protein in them. Like a cup of black beans has like 17 grams They're of protein. Really you can get a you, ton yeah. of good you know, nutrients out of black beans. I said, well, you know, never put them in chili. Why not? So we put like two cans of black beans in there. We put a bunch of extra vegetables. Like it had peppers and onions, of course. But you put what, car- celery. celery and carrots. There was some other different. We got some extra vegetables in. Still used our ground beef yeah. you know, and everything else, but it was Really dang good, and I like I like the black beans in it. So if you want to, I mean, you could you could leave the beans out. You could put any kind of beans you want, but if you hadn't tried them, the black beans were really good in it. We use the bona fide chili seasoning too. Oh yeah. Somebody was asking, like on the bottle, it says two tablespoons per pound of meat. Pound of meat. Yeah. But you had a, some other recipe where you said two heaping where tablespoons was, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, honestly, to three pounds of meat or something yeah. like that. When I when I do it, I do it to taste. And I've, when you come up with the recipes, you want to give somebody a basic guideline. So some people like their chili super spicy and flavorful. Some of them like it mild. You can't, you can't like put out one that's going to suffice every taste. So when I did the recipe on the bottle, it's like two tablespoons per pound. But I always taste it and see if it needs more. A lot of times I don't even measure. I'm just shaking it right out of the yeah. bottle until yeah. it gets right. And chili doesn't develop flavors for hours. So I'll do a seasoning at the beginning. Usually do a simmer down, season at the end, simmer it down some more, and then it's going to be better the next day and taste totally different after those after that first day. So, so you so you got to watch it, but um, I mean that's that's a safe, a good mild chili is like two tablespoons per pound. So usually I use two pounds of meat, sometimes three pounds, depending on how big a pot of chili it is. I mean, and you're famous for writing one recipe one way, one doing day, it, doing it different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a suggestion. It's not like a formula. <laughs> Like, I'm not baking. <laughs> if I'm baking, you got to stick to the formula. You got to, you got, it's got to be precise. There's got to be cooking recipes are always meant for interpretation. I mean, you, you do it. You, you, how often do you follow a recipe to the T? Never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're great guidelines. Yes, they're good guidelines. If you follow it, it's going to turn out good. Yeah. Can you make it better by tweaking it? Oh, yeah. You can always make it better. Can you make it worse by messing it up too? Yeah. yeah. You <laughs> I've done that plenty of times. <laughs> So when you were out there, did anybody want to talk barbecue with you? Yeah, yeah, a lot Not of people. Really. A lot of people, like, um, there was this there was this one big company. Was it called Spaceship? Space Station. Space Station. And they are, I don't know what they do, but Tyler can probably tell you more about them. But the, they they were from Utah, right? Yep. And they were really into barbecue. Oh, Near Traeger. Cool. Yeah, they were a into Traeger stuff. They were, barbecue. they were like, man, we watch all your videos. I mean, it was it was kind of cool to, to know that these people that are major players, like they're like in, investing in creators. They create. I don't I don't mm-hmm. know what all they did. They were into the gaming side of things. They had family channels. They did. They mm-hmm. they did all kinds of stuff. But it was it was a major thing. Like there was a guy at like a lighting thing that knew who you were. A welding aperture people. Yeah, he's supposed to help us with. Uh, I'm supposed to send him some pictures of our setup. And we were, we I just had we had some light questions about lighting. We told them we always struggle with lighting, no matter if we're indoor, or outdoor, or whatever. And I saw a lighting coming there, so what's well, a great time to talk to him? So I just walked over, and dude's like, "Hey, man, I watch all your stuff. Love the podcast." 
He's like, um, you know, if you had lighting questions, and I was like, yeah, shoot, yeah, we have lighting questions. <laughs> we don't know. So he gave doing. Tyler like some little handheld light, and then he's supposed to like make some suggestions on how we can improve some of our stuff too. So that is what that conference was about: was talking to people and doing stuff, stuff like, like that. that. But did you have <clears throat> like specific barbecue questions, like? Whole hog brisket. Oh, uh, salsa. I mean, you know, not like questions. Pe- people saying they tried the recipes as best they ever had. I had several people tell me that um, they all bring different stuff for Thanksgiving. I don't know how many people tell me that they've done the smoked turkey. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they was like, like and then it's like the people that, sign right? like sign them up. Like they don't even give them a chance to sign up for what they're bringing. This one dude told me he's like, yeah, everybody puts my name on smoked turkey. That's what they, they <laughs> write down: smoked turkey and my name. And so that, I thought that was pretty cool that people loved the turkey. That was something that, I mean, it wasn't, there wasn't really any pork stuff, I guess, brisket. Yeah, I heard talk brisket to, a few talk, times. And, yeah. A lot of people talked to me about brisket. Lot, well, there's a few people talked to me about ribs, like Malcolm style ribs. They, that's their favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I bet people from all over the place. There was a dude that had like a YouTube channel about welding. He, he has a welding academy where he teaches people how to weld on these high pressure pipes or something up in Wyoming. He's That's like, man, cool. he's like, yeah, we watch all your stuff, and the guys make grills and stuff up here. He's yeah. like, has anybody ever made you a grill? And I was like, well, I got a few. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to say no. What do you? <laughs> <clears throat> you can't say, you can't say, you can't say there, uh, no to everybody. Or yeah to everybody. But that was cool. I thought oh, it was like God. people in Wyoming watch our stuff. We don't need any more grills. We're good. <laughs> You're good on grills. <laughs> We still got that um, Argentine grill. Uh, man, gotta, hey, look, it's on it my up. it is on my list to start doing some stuff with because the weather's finally. Man, it's so beautiful here now. It's like we let the week out the week before I weather. left. It was like hundred degrees still. Now I got up this morning, let the dogs out. And it's like, oh, it is beautiful. It's like mm-hmm. yeah, you know, there's no you're not sweating outside now. Yeah, it was like that in California. It was awesome out there. I'm wearing a sweater. I know. I was like, you got, that's <laughs> why I asked you today. He said, "Shell, you got your sweater on." <laughs> it was it was yeah it's time so i'm i did not get any tri-tip while i was in, and i was looking for i mean i didn't get to go Y'all to didn't any really restaurants. get any barbecue out there no no not at all that's a safe bet though <laughs> yeah. yeah but i but but i gotta go back because i want to go try some tri-tip but you know on, on the argentine style grill so uh but I'm, i've got that got me to thinking about the crank it up grill and i can't wait to start cooking on it we we need to bust that out i've got some good beef time. In the freezer from Kevin, he sent me all kinds of stuff that I've got in there that I need to cook. You've got some Denver yeah. steaks I've been wanting yes, to cook. Yes, those would be excellent on an Argentine style grill. So that's I gotta. I mean, it's t- it's time to it's time to get into those fall recipes. It's time to do turkey recipes. We got to start planning those for the fall, mm-hmm. getting ready for Thanksgiving because it's gonna be around the corner. I mean, we're here. This is the last podcast of September, right here. It's crazy. So we're into that yeah. last quarter. It's time for fall recipes. Actually, we won't have a podcast next week. Oh, we're going to Minnesota, right? We're going to see the Vikings and Bears. Yeah. Is that next week? Yeah. Heck yeah. Next weekend. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. If anybody's up there in Minnesota, they'll be looking for us. <laughs> Coming. Let's go. <laughs> uh, well, I wish yeah. I still had. I used to have this Viking helmet with the hair on it. <laughs> and I, like the first Viking games I ever went to, well, no, the first one I was a kid, but one of the ones I was an adult that I went to, I was like, People thought I was a mascot. It was up in St. Louis <laughs> when the Rams were still playing in St. Louis, and I went up there and I had this big helmet and hair. I was taking pictures. This was like before I was doing YouTube or anything. I was just a when Vikings we, fan. When we first moved in together, uh, you brought like <laughs> a old <Stereo>. TV, <laughs> big floor speakers. Some speakers. This is what I had: entertainment center, entertainment system, uh, uh, Xbox, <laughs> <laughs> a couple of clothes, and that helmet, and a Viking helmet. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, that was like your life. What more did you, you need? In a pickup 30, truck. You were almost thirty years old. Pickup truck. I was like twenty six. Yeah. <laughs> no, I met you when you were twenty eight. <laughs> what more did you need? <laughs> You knew what I was about. <laughs> yeah. That's a man. That's a man. You know, it's easy to read. He's probably got some guns. I probably brought some guns too. Some old Playboys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Can you tell me they're collectors? Let's do this life thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to life with you, woman. <laughs> I had a whole house, <laughs> furniture. Uh, I got this. <laughs> And I started adding grills. <laughs> yeah. And it all went downhill. 
But yeah, so next yeah. week we will not be doing a podcast. Yep, no, no podcast Just next week. Tyler's out. He's going to the hurricane. Oh, no. Oh, you don't know where he's going. <laughs> I wish we like y'all. I was already had a vacation planned to Naples, Florida, which is probably about 30, 45 minutes. Yeah, hey, our Fort thoughts Myers. and prayers go out there by down yeah. in that yeah, area. That's I mean, that pretty was bad. They're still, it's still spinning and going up the East Coast now. So yep. y'all think about those people. If you can, do anything you can to donate and help out. I know there's a lot of good organizations out there. OBR headed up down there. To Are help they? The I, and stuff, I figured so. they would. Yeah, I've I've been watching. It's been crazy. Yeah, how is your, how is your mom doing? Did she get power back down there? Yeah, so they got power back. I think at like five thirty this morning or something like that. Um, it's I I don't know how. Like it's crazy because there's like hundreds of thousands of people without power yeah. down there right now. Um, and I know there's a lot of road blocked off. There's like shrapnel and stuff everywhere. There's cars in the middle of the road that got floated away. There's boats in the middle. Like. I know that they have like a long road ahead of them for uh, yeah, no you know, recovering all that stuff. So, wow, Naples is like right there, too. right? Oh, it, yeah. it went in between like Tampa and Naples is where it hit Fort Myers, wasn't it? Yep. Uh, luckily, she direct hit. she was kind of in the. I think like where they were, they didn't even get much flooding or anything like that. I think they ended up pretty lucky for the most part. Um, but I think on the east side of the town, I believe, is where they got – it was, like, really, really bad, and the beaches are bad. And Oh, the craziest thing I saw was how the water got sucked out of Tampa Bay. I saw that. It was, like – because it was on the downside of the wind, and it was pulling it the way it was circulating, and it pulled all the water out, and people were out there. Yep. There were, like, sharks in the middle of the road <laughs> and oh, alligators. Oh, and, and stuff, and fish in people's houses. It was, it's crazy. It's, you can't imagine what that's like. Heck no. But, but. I haven't seen something hit Florida that bad in – been, yeah, it's been some oh wow yeah yeah but yeah we won't no podcast next week and then we'll be back the week after yeah to talk to talk football hope i have some viking stories <laughs> <laughs> this will be my first time going to the game up there so awesome. gotta find somebody to tailgate with but we'll have a kid with us so uh, he's good <laughs> <laughs> yeah michael's coming with us next yeah. time <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he'll, dude, there were so many kids at that summit Oh, really? Like, but, like, like creators. Like, I mean, these kids had millions of subscribers. There was a uh, poodle. <laughs> there was dogs. Yeah, there was dogs that had channels. It was like a poodle, and it was just walking around they wherever. Like, it like was... this dog went up there, and you asked it questions. And... <laughs> <laughs> that would have been interesting. It was wearing shirts that had a camera mounted on its back, and it oh, was just really? walking around. Yeah, it was crazy. There was a you parrot. kind of stuff. There was a parrot. Someone walking yep. around with a big, giant macaw. It was pretty big. It was crazy. Was Ryan there? No, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. there was a girl named A for Adley, and she has like a small like children's channel. She's probably like four or five years old, that's and she crazy. has four point nine eight million subscribers. So. That's that one. She's, her dad has the spaceship. Yeah, he owns the space station, oh, space which is station, like yeah. all these like. It's just a funnel of all these different things they're investing in, and they're investing in like like they'll like if somebody has a good idea for YouTube channel, they'll like. Give them money to like, hey, Angel become that creator you want. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Well, that's all we have for today. Well, hey, well, I'm excited to be back and ready to get into uh, yeah, some more videos and stuff. I got, I got energized and got you know got a lot of great ideas from going out to a conference like that. So it was highly recommend if you're some more videos you know, to come. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're getting we're getting ready to fire them up. Good. <laughs> fire up the holiday ones. So it's yeah. been like football cooking. Now it's time to get back into some holiday stuff. So, wild game and holiday. Oh, that's it. Hunting season is on us. So, I've got we've got a week coming up where we're going to be down at the camp doing a bunch of buck junkie stuff, like a whole week of videos and, and filming. We're gonna do, yeah, yeah we're gonna do some wild game recipes over on that channel. Uh, channel. I've got the mossy oak stuff. We've got. Uh, I, I forgot to mention that last week. But we launched uh, uh, a a partnership. That. I mean, it's kind of like they're doing. So Mossy Oak has a butcher division. It's called Game Cooper Butchery, where they sell uh, source wild game to people that love to eat wild game. It's, it's nutritious for you. It's really healthy. It's great stuff. And I had done some stuff with them in the past, but they asked me if I wanted to to partner up and do some packages. And so they have like a elk venison or a venison package and a wild boar package. And I paired some recipes that I did with them um, along with some seasonings and sauces. You know, you'll, you'll see all that's familiar. But go to Gamekeeper Butcher, uh, Gamekeeper Butcher at Mossy Oak. Um, Shell, you can probably look up the exact ad- address. It was in the um, newsletter this week. It was in the newsletter, yeah. But that launched last week. So if y'all are interested in cooking some wild game, I've got recipes on how to cook it. 
And, uh, you know, it's, it's good. Y'all should check that out. I'm going to do some more recipes on some of that stuff too. Yeah. And, um, it's gamekeepermeats.com. Gamekeepermeats.com. Yep. That, and that's going to be, um, what the, there was a bison ribeye that I did. There were some elk, uh, elk loin chops that I did. I'm going to do recipes like videos cause I, I created the recipe for the handout with the, the packs, but I'm going to go back and do some videos on some of that stuff because they turned out fantastic. You did some really good recipes. Yeah. The um, wild boar ribs. There's a chorizo, a so, chorizo, wild boar chorizo sausage I did a queso with, and the kids, like, destroyed it. Yeah. <clears throat> it was so good. It was like a skillet-type dip. There was a couple of little boys at our house. Oh, man. It, it was, was like, wiped out. I was like, I got to get this recipe for my mom. And I was like, well, <laughs> I don't know if she's going to be in the cooking wild boar chorizo, but you can get some. <laughs> Any uh, Yeah. That wild boar is good. Heck yeah. Um, that elk rib chop you did. Fantastic. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. But um, basically it is a wild game sampler pack. Yeah. And that you can get with sausage and steaks and. Different cuts. Yeah. Various cuts that I like. They let me, they actually let me choose. They was like, here's what we got. How would you like to create some packs? And I was like, well, we cooked the bison ribeyes at Memphis and May one year and won first place with them. Uh, well, I think it was third place, but it was it was a it trophy was tied, call. It was yeah. a tie, three way tie, three way tie. So I knew those bison ribeyes were awesome, and I and I guarantee you, you try those, you'd be like, this, this is good as ribeye, like beef ribeye. You wouldn't, oh, I mean, it's, it's it might be better. better. And then the elk loin chops, elk is one of the best tasting venisons I have ever had in my life, and you so you can't go wrong with elk. And then the other stuff, I just picked out some sausages and some elk medallions and some ground elk and different things like that and then the, the the wild boar stuff was just unique because a lot of people don't get to eat wild boar yeah and so they had ribs and there's some shoulder and there's several different kinds of sausages in there i picked out i really like the chorizo i've done the chorizo like we just do it with eggs and make little tacos in the mornings and it's fantastic so um you did a a one with uh the sausage and you cut it up and made like peppers pepper, and, it was like an taking an italian sandwich yeah sausage yeah. and pepper sandwich and onion and well, onions peppers venison? and sausage sausage i think that was one of the venison ones yeah it was really good but um you have two packs available it's a wild game pack that's just kind of a sampler pack and then a wild boar pack yeah. that's all wild boar it's shoulder it goes ribs. with the killer hogs yeah <laughs> it kind of goes with it and so you get recipes with all those and seasonings to go with it and y'all know mossy is a good mississippi company so we've got to do some work with them you know that's something is it, it, years ago and probably still now it it's hard to trust the companies to order the wild game from you know yeah yeah you yeah know where you're getting it from or how it's packaged or that's right how it's gonna arrive to you so um i was yeah, i was Oaks excited to work one. i was excited to know a company that i could get it from that's where we got the gator when yeah. when ninja came up and we did that whole gator it came from gamekeeper meats they, they're sourcing gator and shipping it to you and they've got a whole go check out their website they've got other stuff too other than just the stuff yeah in the packs. yeah they've got fowl like you know they've got different kinds of birds and ducks and Stuff like that. They've got a bunch of different cuts of stuff that's unique. But yeah, try that out. And um, if you're interested, get a pack. Yeah, try it out. Ships try. We're probably going to do. We're probably going to try to do. I want to do a giveaway on a couple of those packs or something. Yep. That'd be. I don't know idea. if we're going to do it on the podcast or how we'll do it, but we're going to. I actually mentioned it. They texted me when I was out in California, and I was like, "Yeah, well, you know, we're um, so glad it launched or whatever, and I'd like to do some giveaways. And it's like I was just going to buy them and you know do one, ship it to somebody. But they said I mean, they're on board too, so so we'll figure that out and we'll have something coming up. This is really kicking off hunting season, yeah. So this is a great. It's going to be great gifts for Christmas or anything that's like a good that. Idea. You've got people coming in for the holidays. And you want to try some different stuff. I mean, everybody's doing the traditional stuff, but try some of this wild game too. Okay. So. Do like a wild game charcuterie board for Christmas. Yeah, that would be awesome <laughs> with the sausages and all that stuff. Yeah. That'd be really good. Oh, that's a good idea. I could do a package and do a sampler board of the package mm-hmm. and you just display it out and you let people try a wild game. Delicious. You know, pair it with some good whiskeys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't that sound good? Yeah. Well, well, cool. What else we got, Shell? That's it. Tyler, yeah. do you want to tell everybody about the community and the app and everything? Well, there's a good chance that giveaway we were just talking about will take place in our <laughs> Let's Get to Cooking community, guys, where all the like-minded pitmasters, backyard barbecuers, and everybody kind of unites and shares their recipes, asks questions and stuff, and it's just a really awesome place to hang out. And, hey, guys, don't forget that we have com and the app on the Google Play Store and the Apple Store uh, where you can find all of Malcolm's favorite recipes. Shell, where can they find us socially if you'd like to? <laughs> if you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ, right? On Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 
TikTok, and of course YouTube. And you're gonna find me live and in person in Minnesota, <laughs> in Minneapolis next week at the ball game. So if anybody's there, y'all give me a shout, man. Looking forward to it. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us. Um, we will be back in two weeks for the podcast. I'm sure we'll be releasing some other stuff too. But y'all, thanks for checking it out. We'll see y'all next time. We gone.